am here at Terra Veg with Chef Liz, the incredible vegan restaurant here in Klamath Falls. And we are excited to show you how to make veggie bread. Uh, send you a, a simpler one, like reduce the, the amount. Whatever, I can also do that too. <clears throat> because your life is busy. Well now, I bet two, one. Hey everyone, my name is Chef Liz. I uh, run Terra Veg Vegan Eatery. And I am going to show you today how to make my uh, veggie burger. It's called Ganesha's Garden Burger. And I, um, created this for a special every Friday. So today's Friday and we're going to uh, create this. Now, <clears throat> let me read off just the basic stuff. You know, the typical, the typical uh, veggie burger, the whole, I don't know who this person is. Okay, so I wanna to talk to you about the ingredients. So the standard, the old school, veggie burger was like black beans and tastes like cardboard, something that's not very appetizing. I'm gonna read off the ingredients of what we're gonna do. So we're gonna use cremini mushrooms, which are these little babies right here, uh, yellow onions, uh, parsley, cooked brown rice, soy sauce, tomato paste, miso. So for those of you but don't know what miso is. Miso is cultured or fermented uh, soybeans created into a paste, and that will uh, lend the unami flavor of the burger. And a bunch of dried spices, basil, thyme, sage, and for some reason in the culinary world, it just works with the flavors, but all spice and mushrooms go together and it gives the mushrooms more flavor. And then the secret ingredient of this is vital wheat gluten. Now vital wheat gluten is the protein out of wheat, taken out of wheat. So it's super elastic and it's what I make all my faux meats out of. And that's going to hold the burger together. Okay, so now we're going to uh, prep. So obviously I'm going to give you a breakdown of a smaller recipe so you're not going to be using as much. So we're just going to take the top of the onion off. And this is going to be pulsed in a food processor. So you don't have to worry about chopping these too fine. All right. And having a sharp knife is like the next best thing to your hands in the kitchen for cooking. Just keep that in mind, because contrary to Papa, I believe dull knives can actually be just as dangerous as super sharp knives. I'm just gonna peel this. And we're just gonna chop this into chunks, okay? I'm gonna throw it in here, and we're gonna throw it all over the place. And typically when I'm doing this, I like do it in stages. So we'll pulse, pulse these onions. And this also, this trick can work with any time you're working, you want a fine pulse for your onions and you don't want to sit there all day. That's what you're gonna get. Always take your blade out of your food processor before you put your hand in there. It's going to be disastrous if you don't. Okay. Now we're going to, this recipe calls, because I make it in large amounts, two pounds of cremini. So you, what you want to do is you just want to pull, pull off the stem. Okay. Why no yeah. stem? Huh? Why no stem? So the stem tends to be kind of woody, 
so you don't want that. Now you could, I'm not doing this because I'm not doing this this time, but you can take these and put them in a freezer bag, freeze them, and then when you want to create like a mushroom, unami, uh, stock, soup stock, you can use those. Basically, we're going to take these off. We're not going to worry about chopping them up because they're going to go into the food processor. Okay. We're going to use parsley, and I like to use the Italian flat leaf parsley, mm -hmm. and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to throw it in the food processor and give it a pulse. So you don't have to get too crazy with, with prepping beforehand, so it's very simple. Oops. Okay. All right, so now we have our mushrooms de-stemmed here. This is our, our compost. And we're gonna go ahead, and I do this in batches. So basically you just want enough to layer the bottom. And you don't wanna do this where you're, you're gonna turn your mushrooms into to mush. You just want this kind of pulse. Mm -hmm. All right, and if you get, if you find like a chunk, a big mushroom, don't worry about it, just put it back with the next set of mushrooms that you're going to pulse. <clears throat> See how nice that is? Did you imagine how long this would take if you were doing this all by hand? Okay. Search for big chunks. And this recipe, it looks like you have you know a lot of ingredients, but actually it comes together really fast. And the key is because it calls for uh, cooked brown rice, I always do that like the day before. It's sort of like doing a stir fry. Day old rice is so much better because it tends not to be so crazy sticky. Okay, so now we're gonna do our parsley. Clean as we go. All right. and cilantro you can store in your refrigerator and extend its life you ever wrap up your herbs in the bag and then after a day they're all gross you can stick it cut the ends off a little bit stick it into a jar of water and you can either cover or not with a plastic bag <clears throat> and we're just going to rough guesstimate. So I'm just going to rip some of this. And if the stems are good too, you can use that part too. As long as it's not yucky, I like to use the whole part of the plant. Your vegetable mixture looks like this. So you can just like shoot around a little bit. <clears throat> okay, next we're gonna add four cups of cooked brown rice. Oh, our 
tomato paste or soy sauce, our miso. So we do a third of a cup of soy sauce. And this is just my personal preference, but I like to pour this over the rice. So as you're adding the other ingredients, this can have a chance to kind of soak in, but you can do whatever ever you want. Okay. So this is our tomato paste. Do you make your own tomato paste? No. So I get this in a can. And even though I have it in a certain order, I never add the miso right away because then my tablespoon is gonna be all yucky. So I saved that part. So now we're gonna do a tablespoon and a half of dried basil. Dry thyme. And you can change the flavor profile of your burger as much as you want, depending on what you're looking for. Say you want to do an Indian style burger, you could add curry, turmeric. If you want to do a Middle Eastern style, you could add coriander, cumin, whichever you like. This is the allspice. And then we're gonna do our This is our miso paste. Okay. And then the last ingredient we're gonna do add is the vital wheat gluten. So it looks like just regular flour. Where do you buy that at? Like, so you can get this through Bob's Red Mill, like Natural Grocers has it. Because I use a lot, I order it online. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of mush my tomato paste and my miso around and kind of mix it. Just so it looks like that. doing two cups of this. This is what it looks like. So it looks just like flour. Like that. Okay. You just throw that in there. Okay, and this looks like this, you know, would be like super dry, but between the tomato paste, the soy sauce, Miso, no liquid is going into, into this bowl. And what I typically do, because I am a fan of using your hands when cooking, I just give this just a slight stir, and then you're gonna wanna get in there with your hands, and you wanna combine it all. And you're gonna make a mess. That's okay. So, like I said before, vital wheat gluten when you are creating like your fake meats, or whatever, it's it's pure gluten. So, if you have a gluten allergy, obviously you wouldn't want to try to eat this. but it's super elastic and really fun to work with and experiment with. <clears throat> Just wanna make sure. So you're looking for it being 
like this, not too crazy compacted, all right? <clears throat> and then I'm gonna show you how I can make the burger patties. Okay, so after experimenting lots of trial and error, I found what works the best is this silicone mat. If you don't have that, you can just line your baking sheet with parchment paper. Mm -hmm. And you'll just have to be careful with uh, removing your burger because we are going to bake these. Okay, so basically, I use this scoop, but you can use your hand or measure it however you want. I do an overflowing scoop, I put it in here, and then press. If you don't have one of these rings, you can use like a mason jar ring or a top, any kind of, kind of little lid, or you can just form them with your hands, it's not a big deal. Okay, and that's what we're doing. And this makes like over 20. So I don't know if you wanted to keep on, like, because this takes a minute. Uh, how long can you store them for? Okay, so. So after I'm done doing this, I bake them at 350 for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. rotating it once. And you can freeze, the great thing about these, you can stick them in the freezer mm -hmm. and use them later. This, these will last like over a week if you just have them in your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And what I do to serve them is that I just have all my baked, baked off burger patties. I take a little bit of olive oil and sear it in a pan for like a couple minutes on each side, and that's how I serve it. So it gets that seared look that you want, that you think of when you're thinking of a burger. And then it also warms it up. Um, so basically I started, let's see, how long ago was it? nine years ago, and I was having super, super health issues, and I knew that I needed to change what I was doing. I couldn't just do like a normal diet, because that doesn't work at the end of the day. So I found this book called Eat to Live by Dr. Joel Furman, and he basically put his patients on like this crazy strict vegan diet where you're eating two pounds of raw vegetables, two pounds of cooked vegetables, a little bit of beans, you know, seeds. And uh, I was like, okay, Daddy Thomas, I'm gonna try it for a month. And I lost 29 pounds the first month. And I was like, oh, I got the flu. So <laughs> I'm like, I'll do it another month. And I lost another 29 pounds. And uh, so I just decided, to keep on that, and basically, it made me go and recreate things in the kitchen. And so, just, like, I always love being in the kitchen, but it was different, like, having culinary experiences, you know, where you can visit anywhere in the world, basically, in your kitchen. And that's the part that I love about it. And uh, then I found this vegan chef that was doing workshops or you could get certified up in Portland, of course, because Portland's like the food mecca. And uh, I went up there, and I continued to go up there several times, and took his teacher teacher program too. On top of that, all the while still, you know, experimenting in the kitchen and losing weight. Um, basically, I lost 165 pounds. And I went on to becoming his assistant in some of his training workshops. So I went to Kauai, Guatemala, I did Portland. So it was a really cool experience. 
And then I started working for a little cafe called Meet the Taste here on Main Street. And I worked there until I outgrew that place. And then I decided to be the, the only place for the crown falls to create a vegan restaurant. And I've been open over, over a year and a half now. So it's what I love to do. So I'm sure I'll be the old crone in the kitchen back where <laughs> someone will shove me back there to peel potatoes or something. And I do this for 15 minutes and then I move it in. And lots of times, like most people in their home kitchen, they don't, like your oven never like temps correctly. And most people don't have a thermometer. So just assume that your, your oven's gonna be running hotter than you think it is. So just check it and you know, they'll turn brown, a little bit brown, and you want it where they become firm. So, all right. So I have like a, a routine that I've streamlined up, you know, throughout the time. So, I'll put this up for you. Um, you guys wanna try my Lebanese red lentil soup? Yes, please. And they're going to hold together like that. And I just put them in a container. And there's your burgers. So you can freeze these. They'll last up to a week in your refrigerator. You want one? I'll do the little mini guy. The mini guy? Yep. I'll show you. So I just, during service, I don't turn my oven on, so I just kind of cheat with this right. little burner. So I make my own ketchup. It has pomegranate molasses in it. Do you want this burger part? Do you want the whole? I want the whole shebang, please. The whole shebang. Make my own pickled red onions. And I'll be recording me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I make my own pickled red onions, and all you have to do is you get a jar, you get apple cider vinegar, you slice your red onions, and within, I like to do it overnight, but within 15 minutes you can have these nice crunchy onions, and that's what I put on my burgers. I make my own ketchup, pomegranate ketchup. Just put a little bit on there. Vegan mayo, greens, red onions. Burger will 
looks like. Nice and sizzly. All right, finished product. Now your teacher's gonna enjoy it. Delicious. Like I said, it's crunchier than mm. normal. 